Hi everybody, it's Miss Christabel again, and we're on lesson six, evaluating sticky test evidence. Our first activity today in this lesson is to set up our sticky tests. I know that you might remember from last science lesson that you observed some of the substances that you could see on the picture. And now we wanna know how can, the, how can we make sure that these ingredients we've observed make a glue sticky? What can we do? My idea is that we will test them out using our sticky test. We'll do a similar test like what we did with the mystery glue A and mystery glue B, if you remember from a couple of lessons back. But I want you to get thinking, what does the word test mean in science? When you test something, what do you do? The idea is that when we test something in science, we're trying to see a certain property that it has. In this case, we are trying to think about and see and observe and test the property of being sticky. So just like in our previous sticky test, I'm going to use some paper and I actually found some beans that I'm gonna use. Instead of using two, I'm gonna use 10 beans for each mixture. I'm gonna label each paper um, with a different mixture. So I'm gonna let it dry and then we'll shake, 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 and then we'll see what happens. We have to make sure that we're doing a fair testing. So I want you to think about these questions. What if I put a big blob of one mixture and only put a small circle on another mixture? Will that be fair? Why or why not? And what if we use different numbers of beans? Would that also be fair? Think about the question. To do a fair testing, we will try our best to make the same size blob for each mixture, and we'll also put the same number of beans for each one. Remember, we're putting 10 beans this time. You might remember this worksheet from your previous lesson when you observe the dry ingredients and the wet mixture. So today we're going to focus on the third column about our sticky test predictions. So I want you to think when we shake, shake, shake each mixture, how many beans will be left stuck on each paper? I want you to record your predictions. Maybe you could use a separate sheet of paper if you don't have this page in your packet, that's totally fine too. And I want you to predict, remember there's 10 beans for each mixture. So how many do you think will stay stuck on each paper? And I'm gonna share you my predictions. So I think there will be four left on the salt, five for the baking soda, flour will have eight, and cornstarch will have all 10. Did you predict something similar or something different? When we write down our prediction, we are recording. To record means to draw or write down information. Now, why do you think that would be an important part of being a scientist to record observations or to record predictions? Now I'm going to show you the four different mixtures that we're using. I have one that's labeled baking soda with the water, cornstarch, flour, and salt. Now remember, we're using a paper with the label. So this one, I'm gonna use flour and water. And I'm going to use this cup with this water. And I'm just gonna put small blobs of each on the paper itself. Make sure that they're about the same size. And then I'm gonna put my beans on there. I'm gonna put five blobs of about the same size of flour and water. And then, let's see, blobs are about the same size. And I'm gonna stick the beans two at a time. See this? go so here's how my paper looks like with all the beans set up so there's two in each blob I made five blobs of about the same size and this time I use flour and water to test it out and I'm gonna do that for all the other mixtures too with salt baking soda and cornstarch but I wanted to show you this one really quickly
by doing this sticky test, we're helping meet our first design goal. Remember, our first design goal is that it must be sticky. So we took an important step to designing a glue for the school to use. I'm sure our principal would be really glad to hear about our product. Part of our lesson is we're going to gather our test results from the sticky test. So I know I just showed you one with flour and water, but I wanted to see how it would look like. So I did it the other day and I let it dry. So if you could see on the left, you could see the picture of the four mixtures that we are testing. Do you remember the four mixtures? I could see that they're labeled as cornstarch and water, baking soda and water, salt and water, and flour and water. Now remember, we're going to shake, shake, shake all of these papers. But I'm wondering, if I shook one paper many times and didn't shake the other at all, would that be a fair test? I don't think so. How can we make this a fair test? I'm thinking that we should shake it all the same number of times. This time we're going to shake it three times. Ready to find out which is the stickiest? Well, I have here my salt and water. Oh, but as you can see, just for some of them just flew off. So I'm gonna shake it. Ready, go. Shake, shake, shake. Oh, so in this case, I have two, four, six, eight left. My next one is the flour and water. Here you go. I'm gonna Shake, shake, shake. There you go. At all 10, stop. Next is cornstarch and water. Oop, and as I just did it, I didn't even shake and none of them stopped. Zero, wow. And lastly, making soda and water. They're all already kind of falling and none of them also stuck. So zero for that one as well be a good time to record the results that you saw on my sticky tests. I recorded it on the very last column of our chart. You can also use a piece of paper if that's easier. Um, and I put salt, we had eight left. Baking soda was zero. Flour was 10. And cornstarch was zero. Think about our results. First question says, which mixture has the most beans left? So I know based on our results, I knew that the flour and water had the most beans left with 10. Um, and which has the least? I think it was the baking soda and cornstarch with water because none of it stuck on the paper. Um, the next question says, did any mixture stick to the beans and not the paper? Mm. Based on what I could see in my results, none of them actually just stuck, it dried up and it just fell. And then last question is how did the different mixtures dry? Well, from what I could observe here, I see that the flour and water, when it dried up, it was a little bit of a browner color. Um, the cornstarch and water, when it dried up, is very um, thick and hard on the surface. And I could see that in the baking soda and water, none of it stuck on the actual paper. And when it dried up, it all just kind of slid down, right? And the salt and water is still really grainy, but now when I touch it and feel it, it's quite hard altogether. In this last part of our lesson, we will graph results and evaluate our evidence. So in order to graph our sticky test results, we're gonna use this awesome graphing tool that you're gonna find in a link that we will include with this packet. And the purpose of graphs is to help scientists and engineers see and share the results of their tests. Here is our graphing tool. It says sticky test results. In the left side, it has all the mixtures that we tested, salt and water, flour and water, baking soda and water, cornstarch and water. And on the right column, it has number of beans with all these plus signs. I'm gonna click on the plus sign and add our data. So I remember that salt, we got eight. And then look on the right side, you can see a bar graph forming that shows you how many of each bean stuck on our paper. Know that in flour and water, we got 10. Baking soda and water was zero, and cornstarch and water was also zero. So here is our finished graph. We have the mixture on the bottom, 
and then number of beans on the left activity we were we will evaluate our evidence and summarize our results remember in the previous lesson when we made a claim and an evidence we're going to do the same we're going to make a claim starting with the mixture that held the most beans so here is my question what is your claim your answer to the question of which ingredient is stickiest what is your evidence maybe some time to jot it down on a piece of paper and I'm gonna share what my claim and evidence was. Here is my claim and evidence. It's gonna be in the yellow highlight. I said the flour was the stickiest. And here's my evidence. Because 10 beans stuck on the paper. I'm wondering what did you write for your claim and what did you write for your evidence? So engineers look for patterns in their data. We just compared our data to see which ingredients worked to stick beans to paper. Noticing which ingredients works best helps us make claims that are supported by evidence. That's what engineers do. We also evaluated the information we gathered. When we evaluate, we judge how useful or accurate something is. Engineers evaluate their results as they test new things they've designed. These results are evidence we can use as we design our glue. I want you to think of a prediction based on the things that we found out today. Just like engineers. So if we make a mixture with a few different ingredients, which ingredient would make the stickiest mixture? Hmm. I'm thinking about the four ingredients that we use. What if we used more than one in one mixture? What if we used more than two? I wonder which ingredient would be the stickiest. End of our lesson today, we learned a lot from making predictions about our sticky test to recording those predictions, to seeing the results of our sticky test, using an app to graph it, and finally evaluating our evidence using claims and evidence. Wow, I hope you had fun and I will see you next time.